what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here so this will be my recap for season one episode one of chucky death by misadventure of course yes there will be spoilers so if you haven't yet watched the premiere that just occurred on the sci-fi usa network don't even bother watching this video i have seen this episode of uh, this would be my second time seeing it because i watched it many weeks ago and at the time of this recording this will be before i have uploaded it to my channel but the tv series starts off with us getting a dream sequence of sorts and we're not too clear on who the whose dream this is but it's in, the indication would lead us to believe that it's chucky just because of how the things unfold we see a unknown little person i'll just say going upstairs and what looks like it's dated in maybe the 1960s and he's wandering this person rather is wandering into someone's bedroom and it's a woman she turns around and then we flash to chucky who's at a yard sale and we are introduced to the character of jake who is a resident of hackensack new jersey he will be our lead protagonist for the tv series going forward he's just riding through the neighborhood of hackensack which we know is also the hometown of charles lee ray that we've heard so much about during the course of the franchise he is listening to devin's podcast devin will be a kid that jake is also associates with and he goes to school with he also does have a crush on him as we know jake will be our gay protagonist that we are following along with and going to learn a lot about throughout the course of this series devin is making comments during his podcast about the hackensack murder rate being through the roof and how it hasn't been this high since the ray family murders in 1965 now this is already little breadcrumbs for the audience to catch up on how will how we will learn more about what happened to charles lee ray and how his childhood has shaped him to, into the person he is today jake goes to a yard sale again he's riding through hackensack he stops at the yard sale by miss jolly's house or at miss jolly's house rather because she's hosting the yard sale and she he buys chucky from miss jolly takes chucky home and we learn that chuck that jake is a art artist of sorts he's working on an art sculpture he tries to take chucky apart to try to make him a part of this sculpture but he's having some difficult time so he tries to grab a pocket knife to do whatever do whatever he was planning to do with said pocket knife chucky's voice box stops him from doing this also his father luke comes home from his i'll just say grease monkey job and he comes down on jake for just not wanting to hang out with friends or girls and just not being i guess a regular teenager he also comes down on him for his love of art and it's almost impossible to make a living as an artist this seems to be stemming from his frustration with his now deceased wife because we learned that they're both going through a hardship financially and emotionally because they just lost jake's mother and in that same respect luke's wife and it seems that her aspiration as an artist was not something he was always in agreement with because they just could never make enough money from that career path that she chose so he doesn't think jake could do the same either so after that brief debacle we jump to later on in that night and jake jake's aunt brie and his uncle logan and his cousin junior come over for dinner uncle logan and jake's dad luke are twin brothers played both by devin sawa who i would say does a fantastic job in this pilot episode portraying both characters the interesting thing here that is just making you feel a little bit more for jake is how different his relatives are compared to him and his father they're clearly clearly more financially secure definitely living a lot better and at the dinner table jake's cousin junior comes down on him for being gay he hassles him about it and after that spat at the table between the relatives aunt brie goes upstairs into jake's room and makes a phone call to someone who is not her husband this seems to be them setting up a potential affair that she's having along the way in this series she finds chucky who was listening the whole time to her secrets that were being unfolded because he was in the closet put there by jake he is ignored by her after she finds him and she just goes back downstairs and her and her family leave luke is presumably embarrassed by the dinner exchange that occurred and he goes upstairs to jake's bedroom and takes that frustration out on jake's sculpture jake wanted to keep chucky safe takes chucky to school the next day he is a student at perry middle school where he's bullied for being poor and just for being socially disadvantaged and there are some logical mistakes along the way during certain sequences that unfold like when jake is in his science room and chucky is presumably doing the things that are unfolding that jake wasn't doing but no one seems to have seen chucky do this so it's kind of like just some logical flaws with it he is bullied by lexi who is also junior's girlfriend she bullies him in the hallways and in class by putting up a gofundme to kind of more poke more fun at him for being again financially disadvantaged and for being socially unaccepted at at this school jake again has a crush on devin and the two share a conversation at lunch before devin invites jake to the talent show that's occurring tomorrow at the school chucky is locked in the classroom by lexi 
and Jake's teacher overnight, Jake receives a phone call from Andy who saw his listing on buying the doll because Jake actually will end up putting Chucky up for sale at some point during the episode. And he warns Jake about the doll being he warns Jake about the doll before losing reception, I'll just say. Also, earlier in the classroom, Lexi does get tormented by Jake or not by Jake, but by Chucky rather. And she ends up leaving the school after threatening to have her parents sue the school because she got in trouble and her parents have official high rankings in the town of Hackensack. I think her mother's like the mayor or something, as we found out previously. So Chucky, again, is locked in the classroom overnight. Jake receives that call from Andy at home. After that call, though, where Andy warns him to check the batteries, he ends up checking Chucky's batteries. Chucky's batteries, of course, being empty. He recognizes that Chucky has been operating without the batteries. He throws Chucky away and heads to the talent show that Devin invited him to at the school where Lexi is hosting. And she takes the chance on stage to have Jake expose his crush to Devin just to bully him even further. But Chucky somehow has made his way out of the trash can back to the school. She actually he actually interrupts Lexi on stage and he starts disclosing Lexi's search history on her phone curses the audience exposes Le Lexi potentially cheating on Junior with another character named Oliver teases Aunt Bree's supposed affair that it's implied that she's having the entire audience is just soaking this all in as Jake is the best ventriloquist ever at home Luke tells Jake that he got suspended and the two have another argument Luke goes down to check the breaker and is killed by Jucky via electrocution the detectives tell Jake that someone broke into the school last night which explains how the doll ended up back at Jake's but the doll most likely got out on his own. Chucky, I'm going to assume, got out on his own. And Jake is taken by his uncle Logan and Aunt Bree since his father Luke is now dead. Aunt Bree asks Jake what he meant at the talent show. Again, hinting at that affair. Jake doesn't know what she's talking about. The only person who knows is her and Chucky. The episode ends by Chucky revealing himself to be alive to Jake. And they plan revenge on Lexi after Chucky tells Jake that his plans intend to be killing Lexi for what she's done. And he's just trying to manipulate this kid at this point. Turn him into a killer. The flashback that started off the show is revealed to be that of Charles Lee Ray. And it concludes with the flashback being set in 1965. And we see that that was him and his mother. Let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications to miss a video. In the description, I have links to my social media accounts, my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course, if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.